Hi everyone, it's Lynn Dion here from Pink Whisper Designs. Today I wanted to show you a really fun, easy, no heat required foiling technique. So you don't need a laminator or a mink machine to do this. And we're going to be using a really beautiful stencil from Lawn Fawn. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's start off with the largest die. This is from the Lawn Fawn Outside In Stitched Rectangle Stackable set. And for paper, I'm using the paper bag cardstock. I'm placing it on a little bit of an angle and running it through my Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cutting machine. That'll just make it a lot easier to run this through. I'm going to die cut two of these. We'll set one of those aside for now. So with this one, I'm going to tape this down to my glass media mat. I'm using some Tombow Permanent Tape Runner, and this is just to keep it from moving around while we're doing our stenciling. So I'm using the Transfer Gel Duo. This is from Deco Foil, and we're also going to be using for stencils, we're going to be using the Conversation Heart Stencil. We're using that open heart one. This one here creates the little conversational hearts. We're going to set that aside. I'm also using the Stencil Pals from Deco Foil, and these are kind of a soft, flexible uh, palette. And I also have a palette knife just to get the uh, Duo Transfer Gel out of the container. So I'm taping the stencil down really well with some purple tape. I just want to make sure this doesn't move around at all here. And then with the palette knife, I'm just going to place a little bit kind of along that top edge. I'm doing a section at a time here. Now you could certainly just put a whole bunch of the uh, gel at the top here, but I'm just going to do a couple little sections at a time. So then I'm going to take that stencil pal and I'm just going to scrape this down. So you want to get a nice even coating of this across the stencil. So I'm going to do this, take that excess and just do this again. I'm going to just place some more a little further down here and then scrape that. I'm trying to get the uh, areas inside the stencil to fill in nice and even. So I'm spending a little time here just spreading this out. And then if you see any areas that look like they're not quite as thick, you can always go back and put a little more gel there. So again, you don't have to do it in these little sections the way I'm doing it. I just wanted to take some time and fill in all these little areas. And I'm trying to get a nice even coating of this. And as far as spreading it out, you do want to spread it as even as you can. Otherwise, you will have like little lines that show up in the foiling, which is also fine. It, it adds a little texture to the uh, foiling as well. But if you don't want that, then spend a little time just kind of smoothing that out really well. So I can lift my stencil. Now you'll see this is very cloudy right now, but when it dries, it'll be clear. So I'm just lifting it off the glass media mat and I'm going to set that aside. Now I'll do another one the same way. I just want to clean off this area a little bit and I'm just going to tape that down again and position my stencil. And then I'm going to use that same technique again here. So I did quite a few of these. I just left a couple in so that you could see what I did. But I figured since I had everything out, I would do a few different ones. And I'll show you two different cards in this video. So a little bit later, I'll show you another little thing I did with this Duo Gel without using a stencil. With this gel you want to make sure you let it dry completely and when it's completely dry it will be crystal clear so you'll know that it's dry and it won't be tacky it'll just be smooth so again i'm just kind of filling in those little gaps and then you can scrape any excess right back into your container i do suggest cleaning the top of that container really well because this is sticky 
And I also kept that little uh, seal as well. You don't need to, but I thought I'd want to just keep this nice and uh, protected. So I'm going to go ahead and lift this one off and again, setting these all aside to dry. So these are the two that we'll be using today. And you can see that they're crystal clear. I let these sit overnight. So these have dried for quite a few hours and they're not sticky now that they're completely dry. For foiling, I'm using the foil quill. This is the flamingo set. We're going to be using that pink right on the top there. And these are from We Are Memory Keepers. And what I really like about these is the size. They are also for heat foiling as well, but we're going to use it without the heat today. And you'll see that they work just fine. And what I really like about these is they measure four inches by six inches. So these are a really nice, convenient size for card making. Now here's another set of foil quill. And this set is the Shining Starling set. And we're using that one right on top again, which is kind of a bit of a rose gold. So we'll lay the foil pretty side up. Then I've got a couple pieces of copier paper here. I'm just folding them in half to make a little sandwich for the foil. So I've got the cardstock, the foil, and then I'm sandwiching it in between this copier paper. And that's just going to add a little bit more pressure here. We want plenty of pressure as we run this through. So I've run it through a couple of times. And you can see that it's already pressed that foiling right onto those heart images there. So I'm lifting that out and then I'll reveal the foiling, which is just absolutely gorgeous. I'm just rubbing that down with my fingers a little bit there. And you can see how beautiful this is. I just love this. And that piece we have left over, I'm going to probably try to do another project with that at some point. Now, I already ran through this second one with that rose gold, gold color. And as I said, I did a few others off camera. This is one of the other ones I had done off camera. And this one got a little bit of foiling where I didn't want it. So I'm taking my mono sand eraser and I'm just going to erase that off. So just very gently take a little time just to erase off that extra foiling. And again, that's the Tombow mono sand eraser. Now I'm using my shimmer cardstock in the pastel and I'm going to use the pink and that kind of creamy color as well. And you can see they have a beautiful shimmer to them. Now I'm grabbing my lacy heart stackable die. I'm grabbing the medium size one and I'm going to run that through a couple of times. And I'll do both of those colors. And then I'm just using my Tim Holtz pick tool just to pick out all those little extra pieces. And you can see how pretty this is. Now for the cupcake, I'm using the stitched cupcake dies and I've got the little, the base and the top there. And I'll be die cutting the bottom of the cupcake out of that same paper bag cardstock we used before. And then I'll die cut the topping, the frosting, out of the Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock because we're going to be coloring this in. So I'm going to go ahead and run those through. And I did uh, two layers for each of the cupcakes just to make them a little bit thicker. So I've got two of each for each of my cards. So now using the glue tube, I'm going to go ahead and attach these. And again, this is just going to give me a little bit thicker embellishment here. Just take a little time to line those up. Now with the Walnut Stain Distress Oxide Ink, I'm going to add a little shadow around the bottom of the cupcake here. And then I'll go right around the edges as well, just to darken those. And then for the toppings, I'm going to use Picked Raspberry and Crackling Campfire. Again, from the Distress Oxide collection. And I'm starting in from each side and working my way over. Then I'm going to just add some extra ink and then go right along the edges. So I'm just kind of pulling that ink in towards the center. And that'll give a nice highlight down the middle of the frosting here. 
So I'm going to do the same thing on this other side. Just patting a little extra ink along the edges here and then blending that in. Now I'm going to this stamp set here and I'm going to grab the little sprinkles and this is from the Sweet Friends stamp and die set. And I'm just going to use that same picked raspberry and stamp this all over. And I'm going to do the same thing with this other one using the crackling campfire. For my cardstock, I'm going to create a standard A2 top folding card, and I'm using the Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock. And this final card will measure four and a quarter by five and a half. So I'm just pressing out that fold. And I've done that for both of these. Now I do want to ink the edges of this cardstock. So I'm taking that copier paper and just kind of tucking my card down in there just so the rest of the card doesn't get dirty. And going back to the crackling campfire, I'm just going to go all around the edges. So I want to create a layer of cardstock that matches what we've already done here. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that for both of these. And again, on this other one, I'll use the picked raspberry. So now that those are all set, I'm going to go ahead and attach this front panel. I'm using my ATG 700 permanent tape dispenser to do this. But you will see here when I go to attach it, I realize that my cardstock is still very wet from all that ink I applied to it. So it really wasn't sticking that well. So what I needed to do here was just set that aside while I heat set this card panel. And again, I did that for both of these. So now that that's heat set, this will attach very easily, and I'm just centering it on the front of my card. And I did that same thing for this other one. So now we'll be adding that little uh, lacy heart. So I'm going back to my ATG 700 tape dispenser and I'm just going to center this. And then for the cupcake, I'm going to go ahead and pop that up. So I'm using some scotch foam mounting tape. And then we'll pop up the frosting as well. That bottom section of the frosting, we're going to add a little bit of glue down along that edge so that these two will be held together. Again, I'm going back to the glue tube. And then I could just slide this in place right where I need it to be. And I'll do the same thing for this other one as well. So I'm going to set these aside and go back to this stitch cupcake die set and grab that little tiny heart there. That's also part of this die set. And I'm going to die cut two of these. So here's another little thing that I was playing around with this uh, transfer gel duo. And I decided to just take a little sponge and sponge some of that onto these little hearts because I wanted to foil the hearts to match the background. 
So you could use any kind of a sponge here, a little uh, cosmetic sponge or whatever you have. You could even use your finger. Just apply a nice even coating of that. Then I did let these dry. Again, these dried overnight as well. And I'm, I'm just cutting a few little pieces of that foil we had left over from our project. I'm placing them again between those pieces of copier paper and I'm running those through the die cutting machine. So I think the results with no heat are really fantastic with this. I really wasn't sure what to expect, but I really love it. Um, so I'm applying a little glue to the back of each of these little hearts, and that'll just bring that pretty foil color up onto the cupcakes as well. Now I did want to grab a sentiment from the same set, and it says, You're the sweetest. And that's two separate stamps, so I'm just going to grab both of those and just line those up. Again, I've got some paper bag cardstock in my mini Misty stamp positioner. And then for the die, I'm going to grab this banner. This is the Everyday Sentiment Banners die, and that's the smallest one. So I just want to make sure that sentiment is going to fit in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and stamp this. So I'll do one in the picked raspberry and one in the crackling campfire. And you want to apply little pressure each time because this ink is very thick. So I'm just applying a light pressure here and stamping it a couple of times. Then you want to clean off your stamp really well. And then we can go ahead and grab the other color. And since this pad is brand new, it was really wet. So I'm just cleaning off the platform a little bit there and stamping that. And that one just required the one stamping. So now I've got the die. I'm going to go ahead and center this on that die, tape it down with some purple tape, and run it through my Sizzix Sidekick machine. And you can see that up close. I have to say the Crackling Campfire ink pad, I, I really wasn't sure that I had to have it. Um, I just thought I had other inks that were similar. So here now I'm grabbing the second largest banner die and I'm going to die cut those same two pieces of pastel cardstock we cut before. That pale pink and that kind of creamy color. And like I say, I just wasn't sure I needed this ink pad, but I have been using it so much. I really love it. It's just this beautiful shade of kind of an orangey. It's not, it's, it's a little different than the colors that we already have or any other colors I have for that matter. It's just beautiful. So, um, and I have to say the same thing with the Rustic Wilderness. Both of those, I just wasn't sure that I had to have them. But now I wonder how I survived without them. So now I'm using the quarter inch double-sided tape and I'm gonna go ahead and tape these down. And a little trick to remove the backing on this tape, because I know a lot of people say they have a hard time with it. Just use your bone folder and press that adhesive really well down onto your cardstock. And then that backing will lift right off. So I'm lining that up under the cupcake just to make it look like it's kind of sitting on there. So it's not floating across the card here. So those are our two cards for today. And let me just give you a closer look at this beautiful foiling. I just absolutely love this. And it's so easy to do. So if you don't have a laminator or a mink machine, this is a really easy, simple way to do this foiling. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to visit me at pinkwhisperdesigns.com. As always, thank you so much for joining me today. Have a great day. Bye-bye.